Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we finally get to test out the all new Ryzen 7 5800U. Now it took me a little while to get a device powered by the new 5800U, but I finally found one on eBay and I did pay a little more than I wanted to for it. But I've been really interested in testing out this new APU and this specific laptop hit all the points I needed. Dual channel RAM, we can up the TDP on the CPU to 30 watts, and it's got a pretty decent cooling system built in. So I'm going to try to squeeze every bit of performance we can out of this little chip and see how it really performs in everyday tasks and gaming. Now before we get started here, I do want to mention that this really isn't a review of this specific laptop. This is the only one that I could get my hands on that hit all the marks I needed. But either way you look at it, what we're working with here is the all-new 2021 HP ProBook X360 453G8. We have that Zen 3 Ryzen 7 5800U mobile CPU, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 1.9 GHz with a boost up to 4.4. We also have the all-new built-in Radeon 8 graphics up to 2000 MHz, 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz in dual channel, this is not soldered to the board. Both DIMMs are user accessible in this laptop. We also have a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, a 13.3 inch 1080p touch display, and I'll be running Windows 10 Pro for all of my tests. So like I mentioned, one of the main reasons I wanted to choose this laptop here is we do have replaceable RAM. This is user replaceable. We have two DIMMs in here and I've placed in 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. This originally came with 8 gigs, it was two 4 gig sticks in here. And the NVMe SSD is also user replaceable. And before I even started testing this unit, I just went ahead and pulled the heatsink and fan assembly off and replaced the paste on this 5800U with some Noctua. Now when it comes to everyday normal use like email checking, web browsing, or video playback, the 5800U definitely has more than enough power to do it all. I'm just going to browse over here to HP's website check out some HP laptops. This does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, so it's super snappy. And unfortunately, the first one to pop up in Edge was Samsung, but we'll just head over to the ranges and see what we got here. But yeah, I mean, going into this, I knew that we'd have more than enough power for things like this. I also just wanted to show you a little bit of 4K video playback here from YouTube. We have one drop frame. This is a 1080p display, but this is trying to stream it at 4K. It's going to work out just fine for 4K video playback, whether you're using YouTube, Netflix, or your favorite streaming apps. So now I want to jump into a little bit of performance. What I'm going to do is plug this into my video recording device. That way we can get a better look at the screen. Okay, so before we jump right into testing, I just wanted to give you a quick look here. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 5800U, 8 cores, 16 threads with a base clock of 1.9. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. First thing I wanted to take a look at was just to make sure that uh, these graphics are boosting up all the way. So I'll run a quick render test here. There's our core clock. And it's up to 2000 megahertz, but this will fluctuate a bit while gaming due to power constraints. So the initial thing I really wanted to do was jack the TDP up on this CPU here using Ryzen controller, but unfortunately, it's not working with this unit, but inside of the BIOS, I have set it to performance mode and it does go to 30 Watts. We're sitting around 25 when we're gaming. Let me go ahead and open up hardware info. All right. So here's our package power. And as you can see, it goes up to 29 Watts. So that's our TDP on the CPU. That's what it's set at with the bio setting of performance. And Ryzen Master just doesn't seem to change anything with this. But luckily, we can get up there to 30 watts. All right, so moving over to some benchmarks. Here we have Geekbench 5. This is really impressive, coming in with a 1417 on the single core and a 6929 on the multi side. When it comes to Cinebench R23, it's also looking really good with a total multi-core score of 9,661. We're right above that i9-9880H, which is really impressive. And this has beaten out the Ryzen 7 1700X. And given that this is running at 30 watts right now, that is really impressive performance. I also ran PC Mark 10, coming in with a total score of 5,701. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks. 
First up, we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 16,303, and this is beating out that 1135G7 I recently reviewed at 30 watts. Next on the list, Fire Strike at 3,733, and finally, we have Time Spy at 1517. Now for integrated graphics, these are definitely great scores, but I really want to see how this thing performs in real world gaming, so let's go ahead and test some stuff out. First up, we have CSGO, 1080p, high settings, really nice performance here. I got an average of 103 FPS with this one. Overwatch did really well, just like it does on a lot of these low-end systems. 1080p, medium settings, got an average of 81 FPS out of it. Skyrim Special Edition 1080p with a mix of low and medium settings. It does pretty good, but every once in a while it will drop down to around 56. Overall, in my opinion, it is playable on this device. As for Forza Horizon 4, it's right on the edge. I actually got an average of 61 FPS, but it does drop down to around 58. I thought it would do much better here. We're at 1080p, low settings. Now when it comes to GTA 5 performance, I was pretty disappointed with the 5800U's performance, at least in the machine that I have right now. Because at 1080p normal settings, I got an average of 62 FPS, but it does drop below that 60 mark. And if we take a look at that GPU speed, I mean it's all over the place. As soon as that CPU ramps up, it does take some power from that GPU, even though we're sitting at 25 to 30 watts. So it's not at a constant 1900 megahertz or 2000 megahertz. Doom Eternal, 900p, low medium settings with 100% resolution scale, I got an average of 44 FPS. And the final game I tested for this video is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 720p, low settings, 100% resolution scale, and it gave me an average of 32 FPS. You'll see it jump on up there, but uh, I'd say the best way to play this on these integrated graphics is taking it to low, 720p, and taking the resolution scale down. I'm just gonna go to 80 here, and it's gonna bump my average up to 40 FPS. Still, not the best way to play this game. You definitely need a higher end rig, but it does work. So far, the 5800U is looking really promising. I mean, on the CPU side of things, this definitely has the power. Single core and multi, we have eight cores, 16 threads, and as you saw with Geekbench and Cinebench, it can hit some high numbers, but we're still being held back a little bit by the power management system built into this HP laptop. Now I have a few ideas on how to fix this. There's a few little tweaks that we can do here and there, so I'm going to be working on this for a little while, and I'll definitely be back with another video and some more PC games. But in the meantime, keep an eye out on the channel because the next one I post is going to be some emulation on the 5800U. 
Just knowing what the single core performance is on this chip, it's going to perform really well with emulation. Got a lot more testing to do here, and if there's any other PC games you want to see running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.